<laughs> Whoa, look at all of you. This is wonderful. So we do this thing, this thing after Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Come on, Trinity folks. You can do better. He is risen. got that earthquake insurance. I love it. Oh, welcome, welcome on this wonderful day where we are here together to encounter our Lord's promises, uh, to honor our mothers, uh, and just to love on one another. I am so happy you're here. A couple of quick announcements before we get started. Uh, if you open your bulletin on the first page, there is this as we gather statement. Uh, today is Good Shepherd Sunday, and there's a little a little blurb about what that means. Usually I ask folks to read that while we're doing our prelude so that you can kind of get your mind into the focus of the theme for today. Also, we have an awesome ministry opportunity with Miss Christy in the back. She's waving her hand. If you're a child, an aspiring child, or you're interested uh, in the TLC Kids Time, it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity uh, to go out during the hymn of the day. Uh, and have a child or uh, have a younger person's uh, lesson taught while I'm up here going on and on and on and on and on and on. So if you're interested in that ministry uh, or you'd like to go check it out, uh, please feel free to do that. You'll be directed back here during communion so that you can come up to the rail. Uh, communion for the visitors is pretty simple here. Um, there's a communion statement in the middle of your bulletin. If you believe like we do, Feel free to come up and commune. If you're not sure or you have questions, just come up and fold your arms like this so that I know that we can, we can talk about it later, okay? Wonderful. Let us now prepare our hearts for worship as we listen to the prelude. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness.
Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Thy will be done, and thy will be have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, forgive us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and to walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please rise and join me facing the processional cross for our entrance hymn, Alleluia, Jesus is Risen.
pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and pray, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading for this Good Shepherd Sunday is taken from Acts chapter 20. Now from Miletus, Paul sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church to come to him. And when they came to him, he said to them, 
You yourselves know how I lived among you the whole time from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and with trials that happened to me through the plots of the Jews. How he did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you in public and from house to house, testifying both to Jews and to Greeks of repentance toward God and of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I am going to Jerusalem, constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. But I do not account my life of any value, nor as precious to myself, if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And now behold, I know that none of you, none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all of you, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore, be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to admonish everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my necessities and to those who were with me. In all things, I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is taken from Revelation chapter 7. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to God, to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and where have they come? And from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. 
At that time, the Feast of Dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me, but you do not believe because you are not a part of my flock. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for the hymn of the day.
Let us pray. O oh God, our Father, we give you thanks again for the gift of life, for this moment in time where you have leaned into us through your word, where you have invigorated us through your Holy Spirit. Help us to believe. Help us to hear your voice that we would know even within our limited capacity, just how much you love us. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus, who is the Christ. Before I get too deeply into this, yes, it is difficult to play the guitar in a poncho. I know, <laughs> I know you're all thinking the same thing. <laughs> oh man, that's a lot of fun. So today is Mother's Day, and it's also Good Shepherd Sunday. And uh, as a father of three, I have so much ammunition. So much ammunition. I can talk about all sorts of stuff that would encourage you, that would invigorate you. Or cause you to go, what? That's one of the great joys of parenting is we get to repeat ourselves frequently. Right? Like we can just say something and then 20 seconds later we're saying the exact same thing. Our kids don't quite get it. Don't touch your sister! Don't touch your sister! Don't touch your sister! (laughs) Put your shoes on. We're leaving. Put your shoes on. We're leaving. Put your shoes on. We're leaving. (laughs) Right? Don't eat the crayons. Don't eat the crayons. Now you think I'm kidding. One time I got this referral back from the preschool, Charlotte. Charlotte ate crayons today. (laughs) That was it. Charlotte ate crayons today. (laughs) Don't eat crayons. Eventually, we get worn out, and then something amazing happens, right? And you've all done this. Anyone that has kids has done this. This serious voice. Don't eat crayons. Don't eat crayons! Usually, we couple that with the child's middle name, right? We do the serious voice and the middle name, and that's like the nuclear option. They know that we mean business. Charlotte Grace! Get your behind in this house now. Okay. It's real fascinating about the serious voices that they don't even need to see us. They just need to hear it. Right? And they comply. I love it. But for as often as we use the serious voice, thanks be to God, it isn't the only voice that we get to use with our kids. Otherwise, parenting would be a drag, right? And nobody would do it. We get to use other voices with our children, too. Sometimes we get to use a voice like, look, I get it. I understand your struggle. I was in middle school, too. Like, I really, I understand having complex feelings that we can't interpret. Right? Or sometimes we get to use the, you make me so proud voice. Now, grandparents use that more often than parents, I suspect. So it doesn't really matter what their grandkids do. <laughs> Jeffrey's coloring on the wall, and it's, oh, bless his heart, he's an artist. I'm so proud of you. And parents are like, what? <laughs> and then one of the most important voices we use is I'll do anything to keep you safe voice. Right? We'll literally do anything. Especially moms out there. I mean, you can go online right now and, and watch videos of mothers flipping cars for their children. Right? There are stories even among us where mothers have worked three jobs for decades to provide for their children. 
to protect them, to keep them safe, to make sure that they have a fighting chance. But for all the voices that we use, they only work on our own children, don't they? But even from birth, I remember being in the hospital and my, my kids were born. And you can hear other babies crying, but you know it's not your baby, right? And then your baby cries, and you could be dead asleep, exhausted. That's like a light switch. You, you know that voice, and that little baby knows your voice. It's intimate. It's personal. And we see the same reality played out in our gospel text this morning, right? Jesus answered them. He says, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me, but you do not believe because you are not part of my flock. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow the voice is just so important. We often think about God's voice in the form of the law. Thou shalt not. Thus saith the Lord. Right? We often think of God's voice and uh, you should or you should not do something. But for those who are in Christ, His voice sounds a little different. His voice is more like a parent's voice. It isn't only a thou shalt or thou shalt not, but it is hear me and understand how much I love you. The lengths that I will go to protect you. Even in our limited capacity as parents, we understand this. In our Episcopal, epistle text, Paul explains to the elders of the church in Ephesus that the voice of God not only mandates rules and regulations, but it uplifts and protects us. And probably more important than uplifting and protecting, the voice of God through the Holy Spirit proclaims the forgiveness of sins, salvation, and eternal life. This is why the flocks follow Jesus. This is why we come into places like this, that we would hear the voice of God saying things like this, that I will do what it takes to save you. Even when you're not trying to save yourself. Even when you're sticking the fork in the electrical outlet. I love you. I care about you. They don't follow him because he has a big stick swinging it around and browbeating people into submission, causing fear. He shows up and says, follow me, I have something better for you. Trust me. You think about the fishermen in the boats. Jesus doesn't show up with a shotgun and say, get out of your boat and follow me. He says, follow me. And they get it. There's something about the voice of Jesus that they get and they leave everything and they follow Him around. Because His voice cuts through something in us. And it cuts through the darkness and all the weird stuff that we see in our world and says, I've got you. And thanks be to God, because of the resurrection, all those who have heard the voice of Jesus and follow His voice will find themselves in our Revelation text. I'm going to read it for you. And behold, the great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and all peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne. Can you picture it? 
and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. Have you ever lived in the great tribulation? I have. But just like these people, even in the midst of the shadow of the valley, even in the midst of all of the weird things that you will suffer over the course of your life, the voice of the Good Shepherd is calling you. That this would be your final destination. That one day, together, we would gather around the throne of God and we would worship Him for His faithfulness to us. It's so out there. It's so far out there. We can't even comprehend on our best day what this actually means. But what we can comprehend is that no matter what comes our way, our Lord has us. That He has us in His hand. That nobody can snatch us out and take this away from us. But at the end of all things, when we stand on the edge of the abyss, we will stand on the foundation of God's love for us. And we know how much He loves us because He sends His Son to die on a cross to bring us here. This is the kind of God that we serve. So in your dark times, in the midst of all of the weird things that you suffer all the weird things that you see and that you experience, know that the voice of Christ is calling you by name. You can hear it when you open your Bible and you read the little red letters. And you can hear it when you come up to this altar and you put your hands out. Know that what you receive into your hands is physical grace. It is a demonstration of His love for you. This is the voice of Jesus in this moment. And when you forgive your sins and you hear that you are forgiven, this is the voice of Jesus forgiving you. Not just outside or far away, but personal. In this moment, He's calling you by name. Tina, follow me. George. Follow me. And follow me. Through the blood of Jesus, you have been cleansed from your sin. Thanks be to God. As you follow his voice, you realize that we are not like sheep of other flocks, we have a different shepherd. And our shepherd provides for us very different things than the shepherd of this world. He provides for us freedom. He provides for us hope and joy. And more than all of these things, eternal life. We are being led to this place where no other shepherd can lead us. To the throne. Where for all eternity we will join together and sing praises in the midst of the light of the glory of the Almighty God, Creator of all things. Thanks be to God. My dearest brothers and sisters in Christ, what a day that will be. But until then, trust the water, trust the word, trust the blood, and follow his voice. Amen.
Please join me as we confess our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God. Heavenly Father, in your name, your Son purchased us with his most holy blood, and he now leads us through the gate of death to our eternal home with you. As the sheep of his fold inspire us to hear his voice gladly and to follow him steadfastly through every tribulation. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, shepherd of souls, your servant Paul entrusted his flock to the care of faithful men urging them to follow him in the way of Christ. Bless your church under the care of her pastors and instill in them all wisdom, fortitude, humility, and grace. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, you have provided us with the gift of family. Bless those who have shown us a mother's love and nurtured our lives from childhood. Bless and protect all mothers with child, all those who have suffered miscarriage or the death of a child, and all those who have yearned for a child and lived with the pain of this unfulfilled longing. Lord, in your mercy, compassionate Lord, you will not allow any power or enemy to triumph over your saving purpose or snatch your lambs from your hand. Give us wise and faithful leaders who will govern in our land according to your law and defend the lives of the unborn, the orphan, the widowed, and the aged. Bless all who make, administer, and judge our laws, that they may not hinder your purpose. Lord, in your mercy, gracious God, you have not forgotten us in our afflictions or abandoned us in our weakness. Deliver the sick and suffering according to your will, and give your comfort to the dying, especially to those who have requested our prayers. Guard us against despair and grant us patience in the days of our trouble as we await your perfect healing. Lord, in your mercy, eternal Lord, by your grace, bless all who receive our Lord's body and blood in the sacrament this day. As they receive the same body and blood given into death and raised again for their justification, grant them the joy of the forgiveness of sins and the power of an endless life. Help them by this sacrament to live out their baptismal life, dying in repentance and being raised in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, enthroned in heaven, you gather your saints into the shelter of your presence, making them white in the blood of the Lamb. Keep us faithful throughout our lives here and bring us through death to join them in the ceaseless praises of heaven. Lord, in your mercy, All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Please be seated for the offering. Please rise.
us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, and most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death. And by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please join me as we sing our closing hymn, I Am Jesus' Little Lamb.
guys. It's adorable. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I don't even know if I want to do announcements after that. I don't know. Okay. Do we, uh, do we have any announcements? Here she comes. I have two announcements. First, I just want to let everyone know, as a reminder, that at 9 o'clock every Sunday, we have Sunday school for all age groups, classes for uh, little ones up to adults. Also, I wanted to let you know that on May 20th, we're having our stuffed animal sleepover. So from 4.30 to 6.30, you can drop off a stuffed animal. We'll make sleeping bags for the stuffed animals, do a little craft and song. Then kids will go home and the stuffed animals will wake up and we're gonna take pictures of their adventures exploring the church. So if you wanna drop off a stuffed animal, that's on May 20th. And then pickup is on May 22nd, Sunday morning. You'll find your stuffed animal in the pew ready for worship. All right, have a great day. Everybody else? Don't be scared. This is a room full of people. <laughs> okay, we have a couple of, couple of other ones in there. Um, oh, family meals. Family meals next weekend. Anybody want to announce about family meals? Does anyone know, here, everyone know about family meals? I wonder if we could get somebody to announce about family meals. Tina left. Tina went next door. <laughs> here she comes. Family meals. Awesome, awesome ministry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Just a little. Hi, everyone. I'm Martha Taylor. Um, Family Meals is 10 years old uh, this year. Family Meals delivers uh, meals, meal ingredients to families throughout the Treasure Coast, Okeechobee, Indian River, and Martin counties. So families will come to the table together and share a family meal. <clears throat> this Saturday, we are having a drive-through. Anyone that needs food can drive through the Trinity parking lot and pick up pr a fresh produce uh, on Saturday. <clears throat> Excuse me. We need help uh, Friday afternoon and Saturday in the fellowship hall. And if you have a very strong back to help Saturday morning. <laughs> But thank you, um, Family Meals says, the Trinity has uh, supported Family Meals for the 10 years, and, and it is one of the ministries of, family, of uh, Trinity, and we appreciate your support. Thank you. Wow, oh yeah. Yeah, that's the good stuff. Okay, I know everyone's like, good grief, let's eat. There is food across the way. Uh, so if, you, if you're looking for, for some sort of lunch, uh, just pop on right over there. There's also stuff for kids to do, gross motor skills and stuff. So bring the kids. They'll have a, they'll have a blast. Okay? Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs>